know, every time we go to the wide shot, I notice over uh, over your your left shoulder from our viewpoint, there's this little trophy yeah. sitting there with a, a couple of numbers on top of it. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. 2011, yeah. you ended up becoming the first female to ever engineer a winning car at Le Mans. Uh, and yeah. it was one of the most remarkable wins uh, ever. Dr. Wolfgang Ulrich has the eyes on. He knows he is just seconds away from celebrating once again. Here comes Andre Lotterer into the final sequence. And this ultra lightweight technology has been ultra spectacular at Circuit de la Sarthe this year. Their motto is to always be one step ahead of the opposition. And Audi has been just that today. Get ready to see the Audi Sport team explode as Lotterer comes to the line for the second year in a row. Fresh winners for the four rings. Audi has done it again with their new R18. I, I uh, actually, at the end of it, I got the opportunity. I was in the pits for all of that and got the opportunity to ask Dr. Ulrich. And I said, you know, you guys have won here uh, through dominance. You've won here through good, good luck and good fortune. This one was pure resilience. As you were going up against four massively fast Peugeots, and there were some other yeah. cars in the class, lost two of the three Audis, and your car still came through to win it. Uh, it was just a stunning achievement. Talk, talk about that. That had to be just overwhelmingly amazing. Yeah, so 2011 was kind of a strange year for me. Um, I'd done three races with Audi Sport as a race engineer the year before. Um, that was post um, that was post Le Mans in 2010. And I'd stopped being Halden's race assistant at that point and got my own car. Um, he had pushed, um, as had um, Ralph Yuckner and, and Joe Hausner at Audi, they pushed to kind of get me to a point where I was happy to race engineer. And they'd asked me going into 2011, are you happy to still do that? Like, you want to run a car? And I was like, yeah, I, I do. Um, I hadn't really run anything in proper racing beforehand as a race engineer. I'd sort of gone into Audi's assistant engineer done some other contract work as a race engineer, but being a race engineer for Audi was massive. I mean, I can't really put into words um, how big a deal that was. And in my mind, all I wanted to do was to be as good as all the other race engineers and, you know, have people consider my car as one that was able to win. Now, to get to that point was a bit rocky because I only had three races that year, including Le Mans. Um, Sebring was the first with Timo Bernard, Romain Dumas and Mike Rockefeller. And then the second race was Spa with Andre Ben and Marcel. And neither of those races went to plan whatsoever. All sorts of things, but a huge learning curve. And it was everything from telemetry not working at Sebring to running out of fuel at Sebring to not doing the tire tests that needed to be done during the race so that the sister car could change to the different compound um, at night, then in spa, um, parts falling apart on the car, then running out of fuel again. And in both instances, the car making it back to the pit lane um, and continuing with the race. But I was not totally sure that I was ready for Le Mans that year. And um, going into the pre-test, there had been a lot of soul searching and some very honest conversations with the drivers and the mechanics because one thing about that particular year alan tom and dindo were in one car with experienced mechanics and experienced engineers and then rocky timo and roman were in another car with experienced engineers who had run at the mon and won at the mon um, and also experienced mechanics but on my car i had inexperienced engineers in terms of myself and my assistant and then a number one who this was his first year being a number one lead mechanic and then three drivers who had done one event prior to that or two events sorry prior to that with andre ben and marcel so on paper we were we were quite inexperienced we were quite sort of i don't know if we weren't ready but we were certainly at the back end and on the back foot of trying to get up to speed so it was it was a hard hard six months um there was a lot of trying to work out what had gone wrong and then how to fix it so everything from lena you talk too fast on the radio you need to slow down and you need to remove the emotion we need you to just be completely flat and so you know if you're flapping inside we don't want to know that you have no idea what the answer is to the problem we've got we just need you to we just want you to be able to say yeah okay car's going to come in you guys need to work out what the issue is it's at the back end of the car whatever it might be 
so that we won't be panicking. And it's funny because when you hear things like that, it's quite personal, you know, to be told you're talking too fast, you're talking too high pitched, you're panicking, you're doing this. You have to really look at yourself and say, well, why is that happening? Why am I, why am I talking that way? Why am I creating this um, storm within my team that I really don't want? And I think it really helped that there was that honesty because I had said to my mechanics, look, I don't have the answers to everything. And if I ask you to do something and it sounds like it's going to be a complete mess, I need you to tell me that because I will see it from my view, but I need your view to kind of help. And so they were really good at that. And I was incredibly lucky to have Andre, Ben and Marcel um, because all three of them knew that mistakes happen in racing. And if you keep looking backwards at the mistake that happened two events ago, three events ago, three years ago, you never make progress. So what they did is help me to understand that these are all the things that went wrong and we need you to fix those because you're the lead engineer. This is all down to you. You're the lead on this car. It all lies with you. Now fix it, but we'll support you. So if we're doing something that isn't helping you, like for example, when we come in and give you the feedback and you get 50 different things that are wrong, but we've not focused in on what the one thing is that we need you to fix, just ask us. And honestly, something like that really helped because it meant that I was able to focus on what I really needed to do and make progress. I was also really lucky that despite two appalling races, which to be honest, um, I was convinced I was going to get fired for, um, everybody at Audi Sport and Team Yos had my back. And especially after we went down to just the one car, um, I was allowed to get on with my job on the pit wall. There was no kind of ideas coming from the guys behind me over the radio or intercom saying, Lena, you know, maybe you should think about this. They just let me carry on with it. We did actually have a couple of issues in the race, um, which again, the people around me kept their heads and that helped me to make decisions to say, right, we're not going to bring the car in to fix something that we have no idea about because the driver's not complaining about it. So just leave him out there, keep going, keep going. We, we are still in the hunt. Um, and then right at the end, the puncture, which was a slow puncture and having seen two massive accidents for the other two Audis in my mind I had massive doubts about leaving Andre out on track with a slow puncture because it's such a high speed track and it's a combination of the Kronos oh, oh that's that's McNish that's Alan McNish that's a massive chunk oh. of traffic Oh boy, that oh, was that, no. He went for a hole there, boys, that was not there. Oh. Look at the spectators. Boy, the camera oh. guys. Lucky. God, Look at that Alan's wheel okay. flying. That is a scary scene. It was a rear left. If that was to let go, that would be a massive mess for the car. You know, Andre could get hurt. You know, all these things are flying through my mind. And I know we have one more pit stop left. But if I pull the car in early, we're going to have two pit stops, we're going to be out of contention for the win. And I was really lucky again, um, that I had someone very sensible from Michelin coming to the stand to talk to me and say, you're going to be fine. You can still do the rest of this stint. It's a slow puncture. It will not let go. It will hold pressure, you know, keep, keep, the, keep the speed on the car. You can come in and you'll be fine. And I was like, okay, the Michelin guy's telling me this. It's factually based. He knows his stuff. We're going to be okay and then the same thing with when it came to changing one tire or four tires there was there was quite a debate at this point i have to say i was all for just the one tire keep it simple send the car out but then tom christensen made a really good point um we had the time in hand with the gap we had to the peugeot to be able to change all four tires and psychologically that was huge for andre and a massive blow for peugeot because they never saw it coming they thought we were just going to carry on on the same set of tires we changed all four off the car goes. It was a seven second gap, I think, by the time he left. And I just remember the cameras focusing on the Peugeot garage and um, the head of Peugeot at the time. Uh, they obviously knew at that stage, you know, new tires on one car and old tires, like five stint old tires on another car. And he, he got quite upset um, and just walked off because the camera was faced on him. And I remember Howden just saying to me, Lena, you made a grown man cry. It's like, oh, yeah, that's not the point. We still got to cross the finish line, you know? Um, and, and we did. And honestly, um, 
up until the point that the car crossed the line, I was still on, right, we've got to finish this race. We need to make sure we're good on fuel. Are we going to be okay for the full 11 laps? You know, all of this kind of stuff. So when I turned around to see my entire team behind me in the pit lane in floods of tears and just this a huge amount of emotion in my head, I was thinking, what's going on? Why is everybody crying? Why, why is this so emotional? Because in my mind, you know, we'd done everything we were supposed to. We, we needed to finish the cross the finishing line in first, and we'd done that. So I couldn't understand why everyone was crying. And we've got Americans on three of the four podiums. Fantastic achievement. And Andre Lauder not looking overcome by emotion in the cockpit, but he will when he meets this group. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Everyone's there. Dindo's in there. TK's there. Celebration Audi. Greg's what a there. day. Greg's there as well. Take it away, mate. This crew, obviously, they are just beside themselves at this point. An amazing achievement when you consider what has happened. Right now, the security people are just letting everybody in there celebrate. There are plenty of tears to be found, along with all the smiles, along with all the high fives. The celebrations are just um, just uh, one of the most emotional things I have ever seen. Uh, Marcel Fassler right there uh, just uh, can't believe what has happened here. I don't think anybody could have really expected this when you know what they endured earlier in the race and this lone R18 in its debut run with this remarkable technology, the remarkable engine that it's using, uh, the remarkable lightweight technology is just spectacular. And I guess that because I was so heavily um, linked to what was going on with the car and looking at the telemetry and all my numbers and all the things that were going on in my head, what I didn't realize in the background was so many people didn't see that information and have it, that in their minds, right up until the end, there was a, still a chance that we weren't going to win, that, you know, after two cars have gone out, Audi are in this really tough position. So that's why there was so much emotion there. And then it took me about three months to work out what we'd done. It's like, wow, we've won the mall. Like, that's massive. Just massive. <laughs>